Hey there, it's Michael Morgan here from Lathrop High School, and I'm here to offer you some advice on how to approach the written questions for the College Board's AP History tests. Now, there are lots of good resources and videos about how to write the various written questions for the AP World, AP Euro, and AP US tests. However, I thought I would provide some of the tips that I give my students that I don't really see in many of these other resources. Now, my AP students have a standing average pass rate of over 90%, and most of that separation from the other classes in the United States comes in the written question section. So I thought I'd help provide you with some advice on how to approach and succeed on those various written questions. Now the short answer question is a relatively new addition to the AP history tests and despite its smaller size, uh, do not be fooled because it has been unexpectedly hard for most students to do well on this section. The short answer question of course is two questions you are required to answer, and the third question you have an option between two. You have 40 minutes to answer those three questions, and each question has three points within it. So really you're looking at answering, or at least writing nine specific answers, because for each of the three short answers, you have three points to answer in each one. So you're looking at roughly nine points here for the whole short answer question. And now while the LEQ and DBQ are worth six and seven respectively, they are weighted slightly differently. Now the format for each short answer question, which you have roughly on average 13 and a half minutes to answer, it's gonna come either in the form of A with two points to answer and B with one point or A, B, C each with one point to answer. Now what you're gonna do is you're going to want to reflect, of course, the actual question and when you're answering it, write A and provide your two examples with the explanations and then B with your example and the explanation. Now if it's A, B, C, obviously you just do one for each and make sure the test grader can see which is which. Now there are several different types of short answers you can receive. You could receive a question which is based Based on historiography, which is going to be you analyzing the historical arguments of historians, either providing evidence that supports their example or says one example is has a stronger argument or a weaker argument. Or you could have a question that is entirely just from your own knowledge of history about top big topics like the Industrial Revolution or globalization or the Cold War, whatever it might be. And lastly, you're going to have a stimulus-based short answer question. And that's going to mean you're going to receive a primary or secondary text source or image, and you're going to have to analyze that text or image and provide historical examples, either from the text or image directly or from your own knowledge of history and or that event in person. A major piece of advice I can provide about the SAQ is to, when you start, write down the time you begin. That is going to allow you to pace yourself to know if you need to hurry up and answer more of the easy questions, or if you have some time to go back and try to address the difficult questions, or even add some detail to ones that you've already filled in. Much like the multiple choice, I would strongly suggest first looking at the date and the location of the document in question, if there is one, if this is a stimulus-based short answer question, and that is going to immediately allow you to know sort of what's going on and what are the themes in that area. So let's say you have no idea what the document's showing or talking about. If you know it's Germany in the 19th century, it's probably going to be related to nationalism or imperialism. That at least gives you a ballpark shot on what you're supposed to be talking about. Now the goal here is to get as many valid points as you can in those 40 minutes. And that's going to mean much just like in the multiple choice sections, you're going to skip any points that you feel are difficult or confusing or you just don't know. So answer the easy ones first. It does not matter if you answer the entire all three points of each question. Just answer the points you know, get those points, and with any remaining time you have, go back and try to figure them out or provide some sort of guess answer. Now any short answer for each of the three points, you are going to have to provide a specific piece of evidence to argue or explain your point. Now that may come from your own knowledge of history or may have to come from the text or image itself, but you should have something specific that you can point to in either the text, the image, or somewhere in history, whether it's a person, an event, an idea, whatever it may be. Now, as you label that, whatever your piece of evidence is for the question in that, uh, in that point, you are gonna spend the next three to four to five sentences explaining why that example answers the question. So for example, if the question is about a social change as a result of the Industrial Revolution, you would provide a specific social change. So for example, say that it created a whole new class named the working class, and what you would do for the next three to four to five sentences is explain what the working class is and how it came about as a result of the Industrial Revolution. That is how you explain the answer. You are not 
providing information as to what it is or who it is or where it is as much as you are explaining how or why it answers the questions. Now the, the, the who and the what and the where should be in there most like, more than likely, but the bulk of your writing should be focused on how or why that example fits the question, whether it's supporting an argument or contradicting it or whatever it may be doing, focus on the how and the why. Now, while, like I said, there are many different types of short answer questions you could receive, these few basic steps uh, or pieces of advice should greatly increase your chances of doing well on that short answer question. Having said that, if you are looking for specific things like tutoring or specific videos on how to answer each type of short answer question or the format that I give my students to use, feel free to check out my website, which is linked below, and that is gonna be morganapteaching.com. Thanks so much for watching.